All right, I think we're finally live here. Uh, let me check the YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, Alright, such is life. So, <coughs> it's Christmas Eve here at Noise Bridge, and all through the hacker space, not a hacker was stirring mm. at any point in this place. Oh, there's one. There's maybe two in the back. Uh, so, welcome to the live stream. And maybe it offers a little bit of respite from your uh, holidays at your family's house, maybe. Uh, we're in San Francisco, and um, if you're like me, you're probably sitting back and programming and uh, coming up with your next big app, right? Um, so, let's see, we have a couple of things. Yeah, it's weird not having guests. It's like super super weird but hack days must go on every Sunday so we'll talk about really cool stuff that happened uh, this week stuff that I really like um, but we'll start sharing it for a little bit before we get started I started with the wrong title um, and then tried to share it to Facebook immediately Facebook is now cached the wrong title and uh, you have to go to open graph debugger which is Facebook's kind of like oh cache of like title and description for every link shared and you have to hit scrape again right So while uh, people edit that, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit. I don't need my coffee. This is how late today is. Uh, Catherine's not here to help. I had to set all this up and uh, yeah, it's a pain. <laughs> so talk about um, a few things until I get the notification that it's been edited and update, updated. Um, 
Let's see. So for all of you that don't know what Hack Days is, it's a, uh, it's a day that kind of nerds just get together and talk about nerdy stuff. Uh, talk about our latest projects, talk about our research, um, and just share it. And if you're watching at home, like you're more than welcome to share your projects in the uh, comments below. And uh, we'll answer all our questions, post all of our links there. And so, um, yeah, that's how it works. We're right now out of uh, Noisebridge, which is a nonprofit hacker space here in San Francisco. Oh, by the way, Noisebridge has lost its lease, or it's losing its lease. So if you're watching this and you want to figure out how you can help Noisebridge stay in San Francisco, um, visit noisebridge.net and hop on the mailing list. Um, and um, yeah, join the conversation there. So they're looking for a new space. They want it to be kind of in the same area. It has to be, I think, either light industrial or um, Sorry, we're updating the thing. Uh, either light industrial or, I don't know how else, like there's weird zonings that have to happen for a hacker space to exist. Um, yeah, so they've lost their lease in this place. They're looking to move to a new place. And uh, you can help by visiting noisebridge.net. Noisebridge and uh, yeah, joining in on the conversation. So if you are looking to uh, find a place to hack, Noisebridge is a pretty good space. Yeah, <laughs> I need coffee. Noisebridge is a pretty good space to, to hang out. They have. Um, a bunch of different equipment, a bunch of different um, areas. So they have like the woodworking area, the laser cutting, the machine shop, the hackatorium, which is behind me. And um, they have church, which is where uh, pretty much all the classes and um, meetups happen. Uh, they, they teach everything here from Arduino, uh, microcontroller stuff to Python programming. There's a privacy hackathon that happens here. Um, so if you are interested, uh, Noisebridge is open to the public from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And uh, there is 24-hour access. So you can apply once you've become a member of the community. Apply for 24-hour access so you can hack all night. And um, yeah, I think that sums it up uh, Noisebridge. Oh, there. Uh, they run on donations, so if you feel inclined to donate some of those uh, bitcoins you've been hanging on to, uh, I think you can donate through noisebridge.net. So PayPal, I think they accept crypto, um, and yeah, help the hacker community. So uh, yeah, it's an SOS call for hackers of the world. Hackers of the world unite. I don't know why they didn't use that tagline, um, but I think it's like a, the Noisebridge space program is is what it's called. So check it out. They have a cool new logo. Um, and yeah, we're live at Noisebridge. So uh, let's see. Uh, we'll talk about cool stuff that happened this week. Uh, I really liked the uh, Magic Leap. They had a, a new, they actually unveiled their prototype finally, right? When Magic Leap has raised like tons and tons of cash, and people everywhere were like, "Ah, oh, this is gonna be vaporware, and like we'll never see the light of day, and it'll be the biggest joke." Anyway, they released something, and it looks amazing. It looks totally cool. It looks totally cyberpunk. It's got these big round lenses, and uh, it's got this little clip-on battery pack, and probably a receiver, uh, and uh, has a handheld remote for interacting with augmented reality. So if you've never heard of Magic Leap before, they're an augmented reality, uh, like goggles, right? Um, and there was just tons of speculation about, is this going to come out? Is it not going to come out? Um, and 
Yeah, they've announced a date. It's going to be sometime in early 2018, I believe. And it looks amazing. So if you haven't checked it out, check out the Magic Leap uh, headset. I think Wired has a story on it. Um, and you can visit Magic Leap directly um, to check that out. Um, so there's, there's uh, some articles here. Like Edward Snowden released a security app. Great. Uh, check out if you're uh, if you've interacted with a Russian propaganda bot on Facebook. Chances are, if you're on Facebook, you've probably interacted with a Russian propaganda bot. Um, let's see. There's one on botnets. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know what a botnet is, botnet is basically. Um, you have some you have some code right that can exploit and take over another system uh, it doesn't matter what the system is it just matters that uh, you're able to control that system once you've taken it over right once you've exploited uh, the security hole this code can exploit a security hole that can take over a system right once you automate that you can take over tons and tons of systems right so Basically, what happens is you uh, run this code, exploit a system, take over the system. The system then propagates that code further to take over more systems. And um, you can uh, really exponentially grow a network of what are essentially bots, right? Uh, a, a zombie army of servers, right? and point them towards anything. And if you watched the episode where I talked about DDoS, um, you know that there are a limited number of resources available on servers, either through their uh, network interface or the server resources itself. There's always some bottleneck that you can exploit. So what these people do is they create, they amass these big botnets and um, they say, okay, well, uh, here's the target, and this is how we want to uh, saturate the target, right? Previously, there was something, there was a botnet that was created uh, and actually sold to knock people off of uh, Minecraft servers, right? That's how, like, one of the largest botnets uh, were, like, the reason why this botnet was created was basically to, to grief people and win on Minecraft. Um, but uh, botnets have been created, uh, you know, for multiple, uh, multiple purposes, uh, mostly griefing, right? Competition, um, for political or philosophical re reasons, you, you can amass this army and you could be a part of a botnet and not even know it, right? Most recently, uh, because more and more things have, uh, microcontrollers embedded or basically small servers, um, specifically talking about IoT, um, the more things get connected, the more things can be affected, right? Uh, I've given up a lot of uh, hope for securing all services and servers online. Uh, but you know, there's still some people out there in InfoSec fighting the good fight and more power to you. Um, but this is something that we have to deal with. And so um, that's, that's basically uh, how, what botnets are and how they exist and what they're used for. And um, they're difficult to stop, right? We, we talked about DDoS as being difficult to stop, especially since they're distributed over a large number of devices, uh, heterogeneous devices, right? Could be, you know, your connected microwave, could be your car, could be your laptop, could be your phone. You know, you have all these people participating and saturating these these resources, and uh, yeah, you could never know it. And so they're very difficult to stop. And um, yeah, the more things that become connected, uh, the more of a problem this is going to be. So it's up to it's really up to uh, companies to keep security patches. Um, available and keep security up to date on their devices, whether that's like hot patching or monkey patching, like whatever. 
Um, so um, I think that's going to be uh, a big issue coming up with the IoT stuff is security, right? Um, yeah, you can also use botnets to uh, mine Bitcoin. You can be part of a Bitcoin mining operation and not even know it. So uh, if your computers are running slow, oh, we'll talk about this next, but this, this was interesting. Um, hold on, let me make a note here. Oh. Uh, yeah, so you can become a uh, part of a mining operation and people can amass millions of dollars, right? Um, if you looked at the recent uh, explosion of bit Bitcoin. Um, so there's a lot of incentive for people uh, in, in botnets. It's a, it's a really big business um, and people are selling this as a service. Um, you know, botnets, uh, there's all sorts of different botnets. Um, you know, from like scraping Craigslist or scraping data or just trying to access a resource that otherwise um, is artificially limited. Um, yeah, password guessing, like breaking uh, passwords. Um, it's basically a distributed uh, computer that you have access to. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, check it out. I think Technology Review, uh, MIT Technology Review has uh, an article. Um, I'd like to talk about uh, Apple computers and Apple computers uh, slowing down devices over time with low battery. So the, the idea here for this is um, over time your battery uh, discharges quicker and quicker, right? It's just a, a, a chemical fact of your battery. So what Apple has done in order to sustain a, uh, I guess, constant life uh, that your battery operates over each day, like um, if you expect 12 hours of use, you expect 12 hours of use every day after you charge it. So what they've done is uh, as your battery degrades, they slowly tune down the performance of your uh, of your laptops, of your um, of your phones. So, if you have an older phone and you feel like it's degraded in performance, you're right. It has, and it's done this way, uh, you know, by by design. So, uh, there's a rumbling of a class action lawsuit that's happening. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I would rather get 100% performance and know that my battery is discharging quicker and quicker so I can replace my battery. But obviously, they, they don't want you to replace your battery. So, um, yeah, there's rumblings of a class action lawsuit. I think it should be up to the user. I think there should be a switch that allows me to decide how I want to spend my time with my devices. Um, so, yeah. Interesting, interesting little thing that happened this week came out. Uh, let's see. Uh, another thing that's really interesting that's happening in crypto, in the crypto world uh, lately, is that innovation is happening at a rate that unfortunately uh, a lot of publications and media can't keep up with. So at a cost of doing real analysis um, in order to compete in this space, uh, just in terms of content produced, a lot of, um, I guess, what I would say uh, fake news has been going out about crypto. So I would urge anyone that's like in the crypto space to really examine uh, not just the publication, but also the points put forth in the publication, and make sure it's like substantiated, right? Make sure there's some evidence substantiated that's not just, per I, I guess, you know, put forth by the company itself, but um, like it's very easy to tell um, how much money somebody's raised on Ethereum. You can look at their smart contracts. You can, um, you know. There's a lot, there's a good sniff test out there, especially since everything's kind of immutable. 
and available and open. Uh, so you want to check that out. And just be, just perform your due diligence yourself because there's a lot of people that are uh, heavily speculating and purchasing um, and using the news that doesn't have enough time to uh, oftentimes do enough analysis and research um, and so it could lead to problems down the road. So just, you know, stay on your toes out there. Um, if you tuned in to the Crypto Builders Meetup we had last week, there was Ty Walker uh, gave a talk about mining. Uh, Ty is our resident mining expert. So uh, if you haven't checked out that video, uh, look up Crypto Builders um, on Facebook. I think it's under Hack Days. And check out the, the mining uh, presentation Ty gave and um, uh, let us know what you think. It was very interesting because Ty seems to be on the bleeding edge of mining and uh, definitely is a strong signal on what's coming up next. So Ty used the example of Verge and if we look at Verge as a, as a token, this was on Wednesday. I know nothing about Verge, by the way, and this is not uh, any advice on Since uh, since Wednesday, it's climbed up like 200 percent or something crazy. So uh, there's something about listening to miners uh, who are mining crypto, who have their ears to kind of what's happening there in that space, and uh, following what they're interested in, right? So that was a pretty strong signal, and uh, if you were paying attention, you could have been rich right now, I guess. Um, so yeah, crypto across the board right now is uh, is down because of the holidays. I'm not really, if you're new to crypto, uh, crypto's pretty volatile. Uh, don't, I would never uh, buy crypto with money that I, I couldn't just set on fire. So, uh, just relax, drink your eggnog, and uh, don't worry about crypto over the holidays. This happened uh, at Burning Man. I think there was like a huge dip in volume being traded because everyone was at Burning Man. This is this will happen over the holidays because everyone's on holiday. I'm not really worried about it. Um, but there are some big movers, which are pretty interesting. Dogecoin's up 20% over the last 24 hours. So uh, shout out to, to Jackson. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's, uh, let's see what else. Uh, so, oh, we got cool new shirts in. Look at this. Look at that. I still kind of fit into a medium, which is nice. Uh, but we have Synapse shirts, uh, limited availability. Uh, so if you're interested, drop me a line on Twitter. I'm at DPG, or we're at a, uh, AI Synapse on Twitter, uh, or you can hop in our Telegram. So some cool stuff we have coming up is, uh, oh, a good eggnog recipe, okay. Yeah. There needs to be a, a hacker eggnog recipe. Somebody asked if I could be louder. checking out the original YouTube link for all the links that we're uh, sharing. Uh, okay. Sorry, somebody told me that I need to be louder, but it was actually their sound that was messed up. So, uh, yeah. Let's see. What are you working on? Let us know in the comments. What else has been going on this week?
Uh, some fun stuff that we have coming up uh, was we have a decentralized AI summit. So if you don't know what Synapse.ai does, we are a decentralized AI company. We're focused on connecting data uh, with machine learning models and providing programmatic access so that you can have like AIs building AIs and um, you know growing smarter. So like that's our, our big master plan is is um, hopefully will be the the data and intelligence layer running through uh, you know in the stack running through all devices uh, one day. So look out for that. We have our marketplace coming out. We have developers. Um, I guess portal where we're going to do bug bounties and uh, we have our developer fund so if you're a developer looking to leverage our platform or build something complimentary uh, we want to give you money to do that so check that out we're also um, let's see uh, if you're interested in presenting at the decentralized AI summit you should uh, reach out to us uh, we actually have decentralized AI.com. Uh, you can email us there, or you can email me, dan at synapse.ai, uh, or email us at decentralizedai at gmail.com, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, so check it out. We're, we're the first marketplace, uh, we're the first marketplace for AI on built on top of Ethereum. Uh, so uh, we're launching, and everything's pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, next up, we'll be launching our light clients, so um, Electron, wallets, that kind of act as like apps and other cool things. Um, once you see it, it'll be amazing. So uh, we're also going to have a new guest out to the next Crypto Builders Meetup that works on MetaMask, and uh, they'll be answering questions about MetaMask and their current research, and they just gave a talk about uh, introduction to... Uh, the architecture of Ethereum, I believe that's what their uh, lecture was about. So uh, stay tuned for that. Coming up probably second or fourth week of January, we have our decentralized AI summit uh, the second or first week of February. Feb, Feb, February. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you're interested in speaking, hit us up. If you're interested in partnering, hit us up. If you're interested um, in uh, participating in any way, let us know uh, how it's going to go. We actually have the uh, flow for the summit already picked out. So uh, in the beginning, it's going to be people who are practitioners that are uh, and researchers that are operating within the decentralized AI space. So um, we have people that not only uh, overlap with what we do, but are also building towards the same future that we are. And uh, we want to get all those people out, uh, kind of talking about and demoing their work and um, talking about their vision. Like, we think it's super important for the community as a whole to uh, kind of think together. So um, the first half of the day is going to be all of the uh, people who are practicing building and decentralized AI. and. Uh, then we'll have lightning pitches. So if you're starting a startup uh, that's related in the same space, uh, you know, you're thinking about decentralizing more intelligence, um, you're able to come out and pitch to the audience. We're going to stream it all live, so it'll go out to everyone simultaneously. And uh, then we'll break for lunch, then we'll come back from lunch, and um, we'll uh, have domain experts, right, that are working in AI specifically. So, um, or that are leveraging uh, AI. So, uh, applications of AI in different domains like genetics, uh, um, whatever, like IoT, security, whatever, however we can think about this, right? Uh, robotics, um, autonomous vehicles. So we'll have a bunch of experts that are leveraging AI in their own domains uh, and then after that, we'll have panels. So it kind of goes from like, here we are now, this is how we're leveraging it. And then we'll have panels of like, okay, what can we do next? Where are we headed next? And that not only includes, uh, you know, the how to leverage and how to apply uh, data and machine learning models, but also 
what that impact means for humanity. Uh, you know, we have one panel that wants to talk about uh, a post-human world, which is pretty, pretty interesting. You know, transhumanism, uh, and uh, I think it'll be really fun. So we're talking to a venue right now that is definitely at the heart, and, and uh, I think captures the ethos of essentially what we want to build. And we'll have them locked down this week or next week. And then um, it'll be amazing. It's going to be really amazing. So uh, check out decentralized-ai.com. And if you don't have your tickets yet, uh, you can get on uh, the waiting list so that when we launch tickets, um, you'll be the first to know. So sign up there, decentralized, with a Z-AI.com. Uh, it's going to be exciting. So not only are we going to have the speakers, but there's a venue there um, and an outside portion of the venue where we're going to have um, like people in from uh, all different domains, like IoT, autonomous vehicles, robotics. Uh, so it's kind of like this this kind of Maker Fair esque, but more like future forward um, thinking about multi-agent networks, how, how do they connect, uh, how can we make them smarter, how can they become smarter together, and uh, how do we start integrating all of these uh, really awesome ideas from decentralized uh, technologies like uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain and what these economies mean uh, to be leveraged in, inside of uh, you know, this, these AI economies. So uh, check that out, I think it's gonna be fun. It reminds me very much of like Tomorrowland-esque kind of like, it's going to be bleeding edge for sure. So if you're into that, you'll want to come out and check it out. Decentralized-AI.com. Uh, sign up and let us know. Sorry, maybe I should rep more of a logo. Uh, I did email. Um, I did email Magic Leap uh, to come out and demo their uh, new uh, wearable, like their augmented reality glasses. Uh, I haven't heard back, so if anyone out there is watching from Magic Leap, let us know, and we'd love to have you come out and test it out in Noisebridge, which is this super awesome hacker space. So. You'll have many fans here. Let us know what your Christmas gifts to yourself are. Uh, I think that's pretty interesting. What nerds buy for themselves over the holidays is pretty interesting. I would buy uh, a Titan V if I could even though they're three grand. Uh, it's NVIDIA's top of the line video card. Um, NVIDIA, as you know, is because of their community, uh, they uh, have kind of dominated deep learning at this point. But there was an article written, uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I think it's on the front page of Hacker News right now. Uh, NVIDIA, the uh, anyway, the, the I'll, I'll find it in a little bit. But the 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 article basically stated that um, it's not just about the hardware, but it's also about the community uh, and the software that uh, these deep learning that has helped Nvidia monopolize deep learning. But there's other potential players coming up, like AMD. AMD. Uh, if they can build a cheaper video card on superior hardware, what they consider superior hardware is uh, will definitely be a contender. Unfortunately, both AMD and NVIDIA have to simultaneously uh, satisfy multiple groups of people, so uh, gamers, machine learning experts, uh, which means that if you have, uh, you know, VR headsets, if you have uh, to basically play 
to multiple audiences simultaneously, your, your product isn't going to be as good as if you um, specialized, right? If you have a very generalized product, it won't be as good as a very specialized product. And Intel is coming out with, a, with their, I think it's Nerve or something, <laughs> uh, which is a neural network processing chip. Nirvana, yeah, neural network processor. So that is specifically made for neural networks, which means if they can uh, you know, beat NVIDIA and AMD in price, uh, their performance for deep learning practitioners and neural networks are, uh, well, dominate everything. But again, it relies on community and it relies on software. So uh, as we get more competition, I would also think that NVIDIA would start stepping up its game. Uh, NVIDIA does have the Tesla line of video cards, which are geared more towards um, just, uh, I guess, deep learning, neural network, uh, data scientists. Um, and I would, I would think that those would move more towards satisfying or maybe even uh, satisfying like researchers in, in deep learning, but um, we'll see. Maybe NVIDIA comes out with a whole new line dedicated solely to that if there's a demand uh, just to compete. So competition is great because it offers um, new, new devices, uh, better experiences, and better prices uh, for everyone. So I uh, thought that was pretty cool. Let's see, there's the, uh, one, of, one, of, uh, one of my friends just got a Jacquard Google jacket, which if you don't know what that is, it's a Levi's denim jacket that has, um, I guess it could be classified as a wearable, but it actually has um, touch sensors here in the sleeve uh, and a little, what I guess is a micro uh, controller that fits into a, uh, kind of skeuomorphic button for the Levi's uh, brand. So it looks like a button, it snaps into this, this other button, but it actually just connects the sensor to the microcontroller in this band that you wear uh, inside the Jacquard jacket. And from the, the sensors, there's also an app. So I think you can control um, the gestures on the sensors through the app to do different things. like. They had uh, the the person who owned the the Jacquard jacket um, had a swipe where they would play a random DMX song, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and simultaneously, not only did they uh, discover they can play random DMX songs, uh, they had only ever listened to DMX on the radio, so they never knew what DMX was saying because everything was bleeped out. And while they were listening to DMX, they're like, whoa, I never knew th that they said that. And it was like, wow, pretty crazy. A lot of discovery happening all around. So uh, check it out. It looks great, it looks great. I don't know if it's, you know, I'm still waiting for the Back to the Future kind of jacket where uh, it's fully adjustable, adaptable, uh, has a lot more utility than just a swipe. I don't know, but it, it's kind of cool. It's kind of a step in the right direction. Um, but again, I just wear plain black hoodie, so who am I? All right, so yeah, I mean, let's see. Do we have anything else that we can talk about? This might be a short hack day, I don't know. I can spend time talking about, you know, our vision of the future, but man, I would need a coffee for that one. Uh, so 
what I want to know is how much of our audience actually um, grew up in the hacking and freaking scene. And I'm curious on how much that has affected their kind of work and philosophy on the work that they're doing. Um, so we'll probably talk about that next time, uh, like how influential growing up with computers, with exploiting systems, with uh, you know, discovering that there's a world out there of disconnected devices, uh, you know, how that mattered, right? So, uh, I have to do, uh, I've been doing blog posts uh, for Synapse where I just do walk and talks, and they're basically stream of consciousness uh, where I, I just like talk about kind of like our vision, um, kind of what we're building, things like that. I suggest you know you kind of do the same thing if you're interested. Uh, it's it's a definitely enlightening how how people think, right? It's it's interesting to see. It's interesting to see how people go from A to B to C to D. Uh, so we did one where uh, I was walking around San Francisco and just talking about uh, AI economies. And uh, when we started out, AI economies were a phrase that had only been uttered maybe once or twice uh, in some academic journal in like 1995, right? And when we started talking about uh, decentralized uh, artificial intelligence, like we started realizing that there's a lot more to the economies, um, or a lot more to the economy that can be uh, created and manipulated Sorry, I'm getting fed a bunch of different ideas, but you know they're just distractions. So, um, yeah, how we can get these autonomous agents to participate in the economy, and not just with people, but other agents. So, if we're talking about multi-agent systems and heterogeneous systems, and uh, resources and logistics and supply chains, um, we can imagine how. Uh, that economies can be created not just between people and machines and people and people, but machines and machines, right? And agents and agents uh, that have some directive. So if their directive is, um, you know, to optimize for some output of some function, and I talk about all of this in this walk and talk, um, you can have a directive that can look to exploit systems to optimize for greater efficiencies, right? So, um, which is which is a pretty fascinating idea. So you could have a bunch of, you can have a botnet that can exploit a system um, for monetary gain, right? And you can have a directive and a multi-agent system that uh, can manipulate another system uh, to produce some new and valuable uh, output. It's all very fascinating, and it's like one of the main reasons why we started creating this network was not only can you get uh, very predictable features out of it, like uh, you know transcription services, uh, I guess like um, you know, typical machine learning like classification, like speech to text stuff, um, optical character recognition stuff. We can get more emergent properties that are completely unpredictable at this point. So there's a lot of reasons to create this as like a, a grand experiment to um, figure out if, if AI can build better AI, right? If AI can build something new. And if we give it the opportunity to allocate its own resources and manipulate and have agency over those resources, like, what, what will happen? Uh, you know, I think that's pretty, pretty awesome uh, to think about. It's, uh, it's kind of like the scientist in me really loves the idea of this. Um, and the nerd in me thinks it's, uh, it's, it's the future. So, 
um, yeah, that's kind of the big the big why we're building this. It's it's pretty awesome. If we can get a system that can understand and identify other systems and optimize for them, and then um, you know perhaps even act as a codex between systems, like that's that's pretty cool. Um, so there's a lot of like different features, different emergent features that can evolve out of a system like this that. Um, and we just don't even know yet. So uh, first step is building it. There's also a lot of participation required from uh, people. So human in the loop, uh, kind of machine learning, uh, training, data acquisition, things like that. So uh, we want to facilitate at every phase of, of building this thing, facilitate economies around those things, right? So uh, anyway, we get into all of that in our white paper and yellow paper, but that's kind of where my head's at. And where it remains. Uh, so if you're a systems thinker, you want to check that out and uh, let us know what you think. So, okay. I think that's about it for us, so yeah. Sorry this was such a light hack days, but it's the holidays, and we hope you're enjoying time with your family. Let us know what you've got for Christmas. Like, show it off. Let's see it. And uh, let us know any projects that you're working on, as well as uh, we'll have some awesome meetups next month, and we have the Decentralized AI, um, Decentralized AI Summit coming up visit that at decentralized-ai.com and uh, if you're interested in being a speaker or participating in some way we also need volunteers uh, to help coordinate uh, reach out to me on Facebook I'm Dan Gailey uh, I'm at DPG on Twitter and uh, I was gonna put up my phone number maybe not my phone number <laughs> so uh, we'll see you next time and thanks for watching uh, be excellent to each other and Hack the planet. Here.